going. And firstly, good afternoon to everybody um, who's on the webinar this afternoon. And also greetings to those that will be watching the recording. We usually have more people in the end watching the recordings than come to the actual webinar. Uh, you're all very welcome. And um, it's nice to have you with us. So my guest today is Tyrone Harding. And the topic is the cost of refusing to adapt. And just to tell you a little bit about Tyrone, firstly, hello, Tyrone. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. And uh, nice to have you with me. So let me quickly thank just you. give you an introduction. My guest today says he lived an unremarkable life before his world was turned upside down and he had to adapt to it. Well, I don't know how many people's lives are unremarkable, but I'll take your word for it. So after surviving getting shot during a robbery, he was left with a spinal cord injury which meant he had to adapt very rapidly to using a wheelchair to get around. Instead of focusing on the negatives, he's chosen to look on the bright side of life and share what he's learned along the way in order to help others. And Tyrone, I understand this happened at the age of 26. That's correct, in 2016. In 2016. So Tyrone, what, what actually happened that day? How, how did you end up getting shot? So basically what happened was on the evening of the 16th of February, 2016, um, around nine o'clock at night, our one dog started barking at the front door and it was a very peculiar bark, something that raises the hair on the back of your head. And immediately we knew something was wrong. My dad and I were in the lounge on the couch watching TV at the time. We both jumped up and ran for the front door because we knew something had happened. As I got to the door first, a gunshot went off single shot to the lower part of my abdomen and my legs just dropped out from under me. Luckily, my dad was right behind me. He managed to slam the door closed actually on the guy's arm and he struggled, struggled with the intruder for what felt like forever. And yeah. what ended up was that he managed to lock them out and they ran off. Um, he called the police and paramedics. The paramedics made a brilliant choice. Instead of sending me to any hospital in the area, I was airlifted to Mill Park in Johannesburg. Mm. Um, long story short, upon arrival, I went in for emergency surgery. I had two surgeries thereafter. I awoke from an induced coma five weeks later to find I'm missing two organs and my legs don't listen to me. And that was the start. I had to adapt to my whole new life from waking up being too weak to be able to move to learning to live my life in a wheelchair. And at what stage did the coma happen? I mean, were you conscious on the way to the hospital? Yes, apparently I was still responsive when I arrived at the hospital. Um, but because of the amount of trauma my body had, had um, gone through, they decided to put me in an induced coma because they knew I would need to go in for a second surgery at least. And my stomach started swelling from the damage and it was pressing on my lungs. So I need to, to be intubated and that kind of stuff. And slowly they tried to bring me out of it, I think two weeks later. And every time I came out, I started fighting. I started chewing on the intubation pipe and they had to put me back under. And it took five weeks for me to actually come back fully. So even in a coma, you were stroppy? Apparently. Apparently, <laughs> I tried to hit one of the nurses, which I don't remember and I don't believe. Wow. So Tyrone, why do you feel so strongly about the importance of adaption? Sorry, Paul, is my sound better now? Uh, it seems to be more constant, yes. OK. Um, so obviously what I went through, I had to learn to adapt to the new situation being me in a wheelchair. Um, everything changes. It's the things you don't expect is how do you put on pants in the morning? Yeah. You put one leg through, put the other leg through and pull it up. I can't do that. Well, in a wheelchair, I have to get dressed lying down. Yeah. So everything changed and I had to find new ways of doing things. Um, for me, I was forced into finding a new solution because the choice was either I change what I'm doing or I don't do anything at all. And, and the thing is that because you'd been in a coma, obviously your muscles must have gone all pup. So you had to start building up strength in order to be able to help yourself using your, your arms. 
Yes, I actually spent eight weeks in a rehab facility where yep. like physical rehabilitation center where they taught me to use the wheelchair where I regained strength. I mean, when I got there, I could not sit up by myself. I was so weak. All my muscles had just disappeared. It took eight weeks before I became fairly independent from it. Wow. Okay, so your branding is the pivot point. Yes. And um, my question to you is, what was actually your turning point uh, that, that, that got you to come to the decision to adapt and to make something of your new circumstances? So I actually had this experience with one of the loves of my life, and it's not my wife. It's actually a cup of coffee. Now, those that know me know that I love coffee quite a, quite a bit. And during the rehab phase, I came home for my first weekend home, like a home visit, and I ran into an issue. I wanted to make myself a cup of coffee, but when I got to the kitchen, I realized I couldn't reach the mugs on the top shelf. Mm. And I actually broke down crying. It was not something I actually did often at that stage, surprisingly, but that got to me that I was unable to make a cup of coffee for myself. Yeah. And the next morning I decided that come hell or high water, I will make that cup of coffee one way or the other. I so got into the kit. Sorry. You, so you'd find a way to do it. Yes. Yeah. And what I ended up doing was grabbing a wooden spoon out of the drawer and sticking it through the ear of the mug and pulling it down. Yeah, it was a simple solution, but yeah. I suddenly realized that I will be receiving or I will be encountering problems in my life. I just need to adapt the way I do things around them. Yeah. Now, what's so fascinating to me about what you're describing is that in our global association, we, we have some members who were born without arms. Um, uh, there's a good chance that Nikki Abdenor is on this call. I interviewed her um, quite a few weeks ago. I and, remember, in, yes. in, and in Nikki's case, um, she was doing that adaption from birth. But in your case, it, it was a different kind of timing because you, your brain had got used to, and to me, that, um, that adaption uh, must have really been mentally quite dramatic and possibly quite um, depressing. It was actually. Um, I got over the depression of it very quickly, luckily for me. I'm not sure if it was just all the support that I had, but it was a huge mind shift that needed to happen. Um, I've spoken to other friends of mine with disabilities who've had them pretty much their whole lives. And it's a very different take from going from able-bodied to disabled, then being born disabled. We've mm. had great discussions because, you know, you learn to adapt from a young age to whatever the situation is. If yes. I was born left-handed, I would be writing left-handed my whole life. Exactly. But being born right-handed and suddenly you lose a right hand, now you've got to learn to write with your left. That changes things. Yeah. So, um, Obviously, we're speaking about a situation where you were shot, you became paralyzed, you were in a wheelchair, you needed to adapt. But if you look at the world right now, the fact that we're living in COVID-19, uh, in a sense, um, all of us have had to make uh, adaptions to our current circumstances. It seems to me that you're the expert on adapting. So perhaps you can give us some almost mental pointers on what you feel would be the best ways for us to approach the current situation and how we can adapt? You know, Paul, the way that I adapted was because I was forced into it and I made the choice to get through it. Sure. We were all forced into this pandemic and we have to find a way around it. You know, our other speakers, we're all changing the way we do things. We've had to adapt to moving online, it's not been easy for anyone, but the process is the same whether it's adapting to a wheelchair or adapting to working from home. Um, so I've recently come up with a list of seven different aspects that help influence how you can adapt. The first part is literally allowing yourself to be flexible. I have seen too many people that 
have been too arrogant or too stuck in their ways that things will go back to the way they were before and they refuse to adapt and they're already three months behind the curve. Um, so yeah. just allowing yourself to be flexible makes a huge difference. The second is to recognize the need for adaption. There will be a problem ahead of you and you can either deal with that problem in a way that says, I'm gonna try and get rid of it entirely or you know, find a way around it, or you can adapt to that problem. The third aspect is to improve the adaptions you put in place. I spoke earlier about needing to use a spoon to get the mug out of the cupboard. Yeah. An easier solution was the next weekend when I returned home, my family had moved all the mugs to a lower shelf. Suddenly I no longer need that wooden spoon and I no longer risk dropping a mug from the top, you know? Sure. So just improve things. Then the next tip is to allow yourself to cut out bad adaptions. Um, the spoon, for instance, was something I was very proud of for a whole week. I found a solution. And when, my, when I returned home and I found the mugs to be in a lower shelf, I was almost disappointed because now this cool trick that I learned suddenly became null and voided. <laughs> but there were so many risks involved with pulling the mug off that way. But yeah. I was just emotionally invested in this because I'd come up with it initially. So yeah. that is something that we need to realize is just sometimes you need to cut your losses and realize this is not the correct way and move on to a way that's better. Yeah, so you and, had to get rid of your spoon trick and, and come up with some more tricks that would impress people. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, we do I get attached downstairs. to things. <laughs> yeah. So here's what's fascinating me about the current situation. A, a lot of people have bought into this whole thing about oh, we're, you know, at a certain stage, we reach a peak and then the infections come down and then it's all over and we can go back to normal again. But the reality is that we're living now in a situation where we have no idea when back to normal will be. Uh, there's been suggestions that um, it can be like certain parts of Europe where they managed to get on top of it and, you know, we're once back to normal in August or already in July. And there are other people talking about the end of next year or never. Now, what I'm curious to know about is how does one adapt one's thinking to allow for the fact that this could be a long-term thing that we're into and think that things may never get back to normal? I think, I can't remember how many weeks ago, but you had Arthur Goldstock here yeah. uh, for an interview. Now he's yeah. the you know, person you speak to with regards to that. But we've realized everything changes and if, th if things go back to the way they were, great. But we cannot assume that that's going to be the way that things are. And if you assume that, it might be the wrong choice. Um, I would say one thing we need to consider is change to what the situation is now. If it changes and goes back to the old normal, then great, that's perfect. Then we go back to the way we used to do things. But if things never go back, you've lost three or six months that you could have been improving your system already. Great. Now, in the chat box, Ray's just asked us, he said, Tyrone, Tyrone presented four of his seven points for adaption. Can we get the other three? Uh, okay. Um, the, I think four, yeah. So the fifth one is to plan ahead. Um, if you know that you're going to encounter a problem, you obviously want to have a plan for it. Um, for instance, I drive with two sets of ramps in the back of my car for when I get to a place that is not wheelchair friendly. I think the first time you and I met was literally at one of those events where I had to be carried upstairs. Yes. So now I know I can encounter those problems and I just plan ahead for it. The sixth thing is something that I found is a problem within myself is to actually act upon the plans that you make. Yeah. The whole thing about um, analysis paralysis, where you start planning for things and ana analyzing every aspect can actually be a problem when you get to that problem and you realize you haven't implemented anything at all. Yes. And the last step is to understand that sometimes you will not be able to plan for everything and you have to adapt in that moment. Yeah. I have had to hop up a three story flight of stairs on my bum while someone else carries my wheelchair up because 
we didn't plan that that place would not have a lift. So wow. just be flexible in the moment and adapt. Be willing to adapt in the moment. Those and you actually had to use your arms to do that. Yeah. So I literally hopped, I pushed up, landed my bum on the next step, dragged my leg up a step, hopped up, and my shoulders were knackered by the end of that three stories up trip. But it was worth it because it was a workshop that I was attending that I just, I didn't want to miss out on. Yeah. You say there's a cost of refusing to adapt. Would you care to clarify that? So I think I've mentioned to you, but other people don't know, is I used to be a professional photographer and I've always found the story of Kodak very interesting. Mm. They were, you know, huge in the film industry. They pretty much ran it for a hundred years and then they ended up going bankrupt because they didn't want to change the way they did things. Um, ironically, Kodak was actually the first, their engineer was the first person to develop a digital handheld camera. And the CEO's response to this was, that's cute, but let's not tell anyone. Mm. They didn't want to change the way they did things and they knew it would be a threat to their co company for that purpose. Mm. And because of that, they closed down because they didn't take advantage of what they had. And I've seen that with an individual that I met a couple of years ago, also in a wheelchair. And he was telling me that for years, his legs were giving in and he refused to use a wheelchair because of that stigma for people in wheelchairs. He said he wasn't going to let anyone see him, you know, going backwards as he saw it. Mm. And because of that, now that he's in the wheelchair, he hasn't retained the ability to walk. He damaged his knees much worse than what they, than what they would have been if mm. he had just accepted that he needs to make this adaption in life. And it, he would have still been able to get out of the chair, stand when he needed to, walk short distances. But he lost that because he refused to adapt when it became needed. And yeah. if we're going to be stubborn about these things, it will end badly for us. Absolutely. And just you, you yourself, um, are, are, have you been told that you'll never walk again? Or is there, is there hope for you that you'll be able to actually get back on your pins and get them moving? So the doctors never want to actually give a definite yes or no. If they give a definite no, they're welcome to be proven wrong down the line. But if they say yes and you never walk, then you blame them for everything. Um, so I was never told I will or won't walk again. But when I, I think it was about, I was still in the rehab stage. So it was about two months after my injury. I started getting one of the muscles back in my leg. And mm. this year I've had two more develop. So I'm still confident that I will walk again. I've had calipers made that I'm going to start walking with, which are essentially just large leg splints to keep my legs straight that I can yeah. walk with. And crutches. So I will walk again, even with it's an adapt with an adaption. Um, but yeah, so it's something that I decided for myself that I want to do one day. Fantastic. So we have a request. Um, if you wouldn't mind making those seven points <clears throat> available and sticking them in the chat box. So if if you can just say them slowly, I'll just quickly type them out in the chat box and. Then everyone's got a list. So number one was? Okay. Number one was um, be flexible. Do not fight the need for adaption. So it's flexibility. If I spell it wrong, sorry for you. Second one? Recognize the need for adaption. Recognize the need for adaption. Uh, we were having a, um, a debate about the word adaption or adaptation, and we stuck on adaption because it's quicker. Uh, number three. Number three is improve on your adaptions. Improve on your adaptions. Number four. Let go of the adaptions that don't work. Of the ones that don't work. Number five. Is plan ahead. Plan ahead. Number six. Act on your plan. Act on a oh, very important one. Thank you. Act on your plan. And number seven. 
Be willing to adapt in the moment. Be willing, I love that one, to adapt in the moment. That, that to me is quite spectacular because uh, that can be quite hard, but most, probably most of it has got to do with your, your, your flexible thinking rather than uh, can you do it or not? Because um, you, know, you, can, you can either come up with the idea yourself or you can, you can ask for help. And if you pool with a few other people, you might come up with something that you'd never have thought of. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, going back to the story of me hopping up my bum up the stairs, I could have easily said, I'm not going through that effort. I'm going home and I'll find yeah. another workshop that does something similar for me and do that. But I made the choice. And that's the yeah. thing. You just have to make the mental choice to be willing to do. Absolutely. So some people are just totally overwhelmed by everything going on in the world today. So what words of encouragement do you have for those people regarding adaption and their mindset towards being able to adapt? Now, I've come a lot, a lot, a long way and I've had to do a lot with the situation that I was given. And the amazing thing about me, the thing that makes me unique from everyone else that was in that situation is nothing. I am not unique. It's not anything that I had a special formula that worked out or I had a secret weapon that other people didn't have. I've seen it time and time again, people end up in a wheelchair and learn to adapt to their lives. I'm a peer supporter at the hospital. So I see it repeatedly and it made me realize that human beings are actually we're capable and we have this unlocked ability to adapt. We just don't realize it until we need it. And if you can just unlock that, that's what I'm trying to do is tell people that we have this ability locked in us. If you just unlock that untapped potential to adapt, you can change to whatever the situation is. And we all have this ability. I think that's the great thing is to know we're all in the same boat. Everything is rough at the moment. We're not alone, but people are making it through because we can do it. Great. So there was a question about your, um, your brand. So I've typed it in the chat box, uh, the pivot point. Um, yes. But I, is that right? Yes. That's, that's correct. correct. The pivot point. Okay. But what, what, was remarkable to me when I met you just over uh, a year and a half ago was your amazingly positive attitude even then. And that was probably just over three years after the accident had happened. And I'm wondering if what has happened to you has not in a sense been the catalyst for you mentally being better than you otherwise would have been had it not happened. Absolutely. I, I'm a completely different person and not just because of the wheelchair, but because I, I think I mentioned in my talks that I nearly died and that made me appreciate life. So yeah. from the get go, I never had this negative aspect of life sucks now that I'm in a wheelchair. For me, it was always about the fact that I'm happy to be alive and I will deal with whatever problem comes. And it's been a blessing. It sounds weird, but me being paralyzed has been a blessing in disguise. Yeah, well, in a, in a sense, I think you've probably got a proud list of achievements of all the things that you've been able to do um, that life would have told you that you shouldn't have been able to do and that you, you in a sense, can kind of tick them off. And um, if you look back over a month, you can say, well, three or four weeks ago, I couldn't do this. I've managed to figure out a way to do it. And I mean, that must be an incredible feeling. It truly is. I mean, before all this happened, I was in a different career. I would never have imagined myself speaking to more than four people at a time. I'm technically an introvert as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I've spoken in crowds of hundreds of people and I never thought I would be willing to do that. And I was pushed into this and I'm so happy my life has changed. That's why I say it has been a blessing. Wow. 
So Tyrone, you described yourself when I asked you to send me the bio as, as being a fairly unremarkable person or having a fairly unremarkable life. You're now carving out a niche for yourself as a motivational speaker. Um, there are many of us, including me, that you've really touched this afternoon. But what I'd like to ask you is how can people get hold of you if they want to book you to come and speak to their team to try and encourage because really your message is, is for right now. This is the perfect message for the times that we're in right now. Because we often look at our situations and we think, woe is me, you know, I'm in overdraft and this and that and the next thing. Um, well, how about if we took your legs away or if we took your arms away, if we took all of them away, um, how would you be then? So how, could be, how can people get hold of you if they want to book you, if they want to recommend you to other people? Where do they find you? Thanks, Paul, I appreciate that. Um, they can find me either on Facebook. I've got a page, Tyron Harding Motivational Speaker, or they can go to my website, thepivotpoint.co.za, or they can even find me on YouTube under The Pivot Point. From ending, I just want to thank you very much for agreeing to come on and share your story with us. Uh, I didn't know as many details about it as I know now, but I'm truly just knocked out by your perseverance, by your attitude, and the way you've turned that round to to help others and to show them that no matter what adversity faces them, there's, there's a chance that they can make good and in fact make things better than they were prior to there being any adversity. So from me and everyone who's listening and everyone who's going to be listening to this recording, thank you so much for giving of yourself and all the very best. And folk, thank you for joining us uh, today. My guest was Tyrone Lee Harding. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,